My name is Chris Campbell. I'm a practicing CPA and I work with individuals and small businesses to help them pay the least amount of taxes possible by keeping them out of jail. So today I wanted to talk about uh, uh, tax collections or if you have a tax balance or you have taxes due, a lot of taxes due, and you're not able to pay it all in one shot. You might have had a couple of uh, years of taxes that built up or it might just be one year where you're operating your business, you're making money, um, but you're not setting aside enough for taxes or you just haven't done proper planning and the next thing you know, you wind up with a pretty large bill and you gotta figure out how to handle it. I've worked through this with a number of my clients uh, to help them navigate. So I just wanted to point out a couple of things that I think would be useful for others that might be in that same situation. And this is specifically for the IRS, not for the states. So if you wind up owing a good amount of taxes and you're not in a position to pay it all off, you can create a payment plan or what the IRS refers to it as uh, an installment agreement. You can go and make a request to the IRS. It is a form that you fill out requesting to make a payment plan. And usually they'll allow you to pay it uh, over six years. And when I say that to many of my clients, to look at great, I can just pay it over the six years. But a couple caveats you have to understand with that. So uh, the first thing is you're only allowed to have one payment plan with the IRS. So you can't go with the strategy of I'm going to take this year's taxes, pay that off over six years. The next year I'll be in the same predicament. I'll set up another payment plan and pay that over another six years and so on and so forth. So you'll just keep stacking payment plans until they pay off. Unfortunately, that's not a strategy that you can do because that's not allowed. You're only allowed to have one payment plan. Now, what you can do is combine years within a payment plan. So let's say that in year one, you owe 30,000 and you set up a payment plan. And let's say year two comes along, you owe 20,000 and you're still making payments on year one. Request the IRS to combine the years and create a new plan. So another thing you do have to be aware of is there is a fee to create the payment plan. And I can't even remember what the dollar amount. It's, it's not a lot. It's between $100 and $150. I don't remember offhand exactly what the amount is, but they do charge you for the payment plan and they just tack it on to your balance. If it's $30,000 that you owe, it's $30,000 plus the $100. I want to say 115 or 16 dollars, whatever it is. So they'll tack it on to the balance. Also understand that during the payment plan, interest and penalties do not stop. So that, that's one thing that many of my clients take into account. So if you set up a payment plan to pay $30,000 over your six years, you're paying more than the 30,000 because uh, interest and penalties will accrue on the remaining balance until it's paid off. Now, the interest rate isn't that high. It's usually around current mortgage rates. It's usually in that neighborhood. So uh, when I'm filming that, this video, I'm in early or second quarter 2023, I believe the rates are around 7%. So it's like mortgage rates, not like credit card rates. So you're not paying anything crazy, 20, 25%, that type of thing. So which brings me to another thing is that if you have a balance, you want to pay it on credit card. I would strongly advise against paying on the credit card, especially if you're going to pay off that credit card over time, because nine times out of 10, that credit card is going to have a much higher interest rate uh, than what the IRS is going to charge you. But again, we're in uh, second quarter 23, we're looking at about 7%. Most credit cards out here, you're hovering around 15, 20, 20 some odd percent at this point. Uh, you're better off just setting up the plan versus just paying the car. Now, when you're doing an installment agreement, there are two figures you gotta keep into account. One is $25,000 and the other is $50,000. So I'll start with the $50,000 first. $50,000 number is key because that is the threshold for easily getting an installment agreement payment plan. But if you owe less than 50,000, it's a pretty simple process I've never seen an amount rejected as long as you're paying enough to cover the bill in the six years. But it's relatively easy to get your payment plan approved if you owe less than, it's essentially a one page application. You put in pretty basic information when you wanna pay your proposed payment. Again, as long as your payment is enough to cover that bill within the six years, then 
you usually don't have a problem getting approved. If you owe more than the 50,000, then the approval process is a little more complex because at that point, IRS would like a full personal accounting of all of your income and your assets. You uh, will have to submit a personal balance sheet where you are listing out all of your assets, including your retirement, all of uh, your debt, and when I say all your assets, cars, houses, retirement accounts, uh, they want to see all of that. Because you owe so much, they want to provide a little bit more scrutiny before approving your plan if you owe over that 50000 What I do advise a lot of my clients is if they want to get into a payment plan and they owe over that fifty. I, I advise my clients to pay just what they need to get below that fifty k threshold, and then we go and set up the payment plan because it's just so much easier. It's so much of a headache when you have to go through all the personal assets, the liabilities, and then you also run the risk of doing all that. And they can tell you no, <laughs> we don't approve the plan. You have the assets, so we want our money. But the second figure was twenty five thousand. So with twenty five thousand. If you owe over $25,000 and you get into a payment plan, you must pay via direct debit. They draw from your account automatically. You can pick the day of the month that you'd want it drawn, but nonetheless, in order for your payment plan to be approved, they must withdraw from your account automatically. You don't have the option of mailing in a check, going online and paying it on your own. And I know that some folks might be averse to giving the IRS your bank account number. But nonetheless, if you want it approved, that's what you have to do. So if you're adverse to that, get your bill under 25K and, and then go set up a payment plan. Now, if you think you're in a bigger hole and you don't think that paying the balance off is realistic, maybe you're in a situation where you made a lot of money at one point and you're not now. So let's say that you had a business and it was doing great and then it went bust, so think crypto. So you were high flying with crypto, you were making a ton of money, and then crypto crashed, some people went under, some people went out of business. So let's say that happened, but you had prior tax balance, and you're in a situation where you don't think you'll be able to pay it anytime soon. You can draw up what's called an offer of compromise, where, and I'm not gonna get too much in details with that, I think that might be for another video, where I can walk through that, but it's basically a settlement. So you're going to the IRS and saying, hey, look, I know I owe this money. My current financial situation doesn't allow me or won't allow me to make reasonable payments, especially within that six year window that I spoke about. You can propose a settlement amount to the IRS. And again, they have to decide if that's something that they want to take. And it's very similar to what I was discussing. If you owe more than 50,000, there is a complete personal balance sheet that you'll have to submit essentially income as well. So they want to know your current job. So it's a whole lengthy application. And maybe like I said, I'll get more into detail with that, but you can submit that. Now, the likelihood uh, of getting accepted for an offer compromise is not really that high. I think the last time I looked, acceptance rate of the IRS was in like the 30s, 30, like 30, 30 to 40% uh, acceptance rate. So it's not really that high. And you also have to understand because you are submitting a, a personal balance sheet, IRS uh, is expecting you to essentially have no assets. And if you expect them to waive them collecting any of their taxes, they want to know homes, they want to know retirement accounts, they want to know all that stuff. If you're looking to submit an offer and compromise, um, you should have very little assets if you're expecting to get your settlement offer accepted. So that's all for now, just a few pointers on tax collection. So if you have any more questions about this particular subject or any other tax or accounting related question, feel free to reach out. Happy to help. See you on the next one.